In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May the Lord graciously renew us that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. Lord our God, you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race, and last of all through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who will receive their baptism through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God, and on earth peace to people, to people of goodwill. God in the highest glory to God and on earth peace to people to people of goodwill we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, glory to God, and on earth peace to people, to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus, 
Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. And on earth, peace to people, to people of goodwill. For you, the Lord, are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O Lord, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, you who are Jews, indeed all you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs which God worked through him in your midst as you yourselves know. This man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed you using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exulted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David, that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in the, our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's work, conduct yourself with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you and with your spirit. a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory to you lord 
that very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place, and some women from our group have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the things that intrigues me about this Sunday's Gospel is that Jesus appears on that first Easter Sunday to a couple of second or maybe even third string players. These two might be just a couple of those on again off again followers of Jesus. As a matter of fact, this is the only time that a disciple named Cleopas is even mentioned in the Gospels. 
And the disciple that he's walking with doesn't even get a name. It really is fascinating that Jesus would appear on that first Easter Sunday, at least in Luke's gospel anyway, not to any of the twelve disciples, or even to the women who went to the tomb that morning, but to two of his lesser-known followers. And yet, at the same time, that is really kind of encouraging. It reminds us that the way of discipleship is open to each one of us. It might seem strange at first, but just like the two essentially anonymous disciples on the road to Emmaus, Christ will also open our minds to understand his word. Why me, you may ask? Well, Jesus is not looking for supermen or superwomen. He's looking for ordinary people, open-hearted men and women, to receive God's gifts of grace, forgiveness, and love. And then to pass that grace, forgiveness, and love on to others. It's in the breaking of the bread that the two disciples recognize Jesus. For us, receiving the Eucharist is one of the ways we affirm our connection with the living body of Christ, especially visible as we snake our way in line up the aisle to the sanctuary. And that includes all of us, young and old, women and men, people of every race and tongue and economic class. I felt this connection myself in magnificent cathedrals and humble parish churches. I felt it here in Whiting and in Rensselaer and in Northwest Ohio. As different as all those places might be, it is the Eucharist that unites us. So what does this all mean in this strange and difficult time when our communion lines and our physical presence to one another have all but disappeared? In our gospel, the two disciples were grieving the loss of Jesus. But after they recognized him in the breaking of the bread, and realized that he was indeed still with them. That is as true today as it was back then. Jesus has not abandoned us. He is present to us in his living body to help us cope with any hardship we may have. This time of separation from receiving the Eucharist may be an opportunity to increase our love of the sacrament and the faith communities in which we receive it. This separation may remind us right now 
that this body, the church, knows no borders, and that at the end of every Mass, we are sent to go forth to love and serve the Lord by loving and serving others. It's up to us to bring our identity as the body of Christ to life and not to just leave that identity at the church door. Remember that the two disciples didn't actually have a clue as to who Jesus was and what he was saying until he sat down with them and broke bread with them at their table. An ordinary act, an ordinary meal, in an ordinary house with ordinary folks. Nothing fancy, just a simple meal. And it was then that they recognized the Lord. One God, Son of the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the disciples on the way to Emmaus, let us ask Christ to stay with us a while and answer our prayers. For all who seek the truth and for all who guide us in faith, let us pray to the Lord. For civil authorities and for all who work towards the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the unemployed, and all who struggle to make ends meet, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering in this pandemic, and for those who have lost loved ones to the COVID-19, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith family and for all who recognize the face of God in each person we encounter, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Gregory Janik, Kenneth Kurash, and for all our brothers and sisters who have died. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you open our eyes to recognize your Son. Hear our needs and grant what we ask in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, 
so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint John the Baptist, Saint Adelbert, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the, the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia. Now is risen from the dead.